In a previous video, I showed you how I created this neat looking LED bar. And finally, I will present you the first part on how I built the main core of the bar itself, this 15 by 10 RGB LED matrix. In this first part, I will mostly talk about the construction of the cardboard pattern, which gives the LED light its pixel shape. And also about the first attempt on how I tried to control the 150 RGB LEDs individually. Because, drum rolls please, I actually built this matrix twice. Yes, twice. So I thought, why not share my knowledge on how not to build a LED matrix correctly? Let's get started. The frame for the matrix is already complete, so we can start with the cardboard strips. And obviously, we are going to need a lot of cardboard. They needed to be cut at a length of 146.5cm and a width of 12.5cm. I used a utility knife for the job and cut along the lines very carefully. I did this process 9 times to get 9 strips to form the 10 rows of the matrix. Then I positioned those evenly with a distance of 9.5cm to each other and used hot glue to secure them to the wood frame. And if you think, why did this idiot use cardboard? Well, I had it laying around, it is cheap and can easily be treated with a knife or a dremel. And nobody will see it inside the bar anyway. Ok, all rows are done. Time to make the columns. I made the exact same strips as before. But this time I cut them again with a length of around 9.5cm. If you want to build this too, then do not worry too much about precision with those, because you can always shorten them with a Dremel afterwards. When I finished 140 of those cardboard pieces, it was time to assemble the matrix construction. I positioned 14 of those little pieces evenly with a distance of 9.5cm to each other in the rows and again used hot glue to firmly secure them to the long row strips and the wood frame. This structure, made of glue and cardboard, is actually pretty strong in the end and can endure much abuse when it comes to moving it around. Ok, time for the LEDs. And here starts the part which you might not want to repeat. If you watched my RGB LED cube video, then you have a good idea of what I tried to do here. I used 5mm common anode RGB LEDs and glued one into each section of the matrix. Then I connected all cathodes of each color in a column with short pieces of solid wire and also connected all anodes in a row with the same wire. And the display is done! Easy! Right? This picture here from Solder Labs should give you a good idea of how I wired up the LEDs. But if you are completely confused right now, then check out my multiplex video about the subject. The only thing left was a controller, so I started to build one. And as you can see, it looks really similar to the LED cube controller. There are just 10 MOSFETs instead of 4 to multiplex the 10 rows instead of 4 layers of the cube. But before I could test this controller and the code, I had to use this ribbon cable and mail headers to connect the anode rows to the MOSFETs and the cathode columns to the outputs of the TLC5940 LED driver. Ok, everything is plugged in and ready for the first test. And it works! Awesome! It just goes through the colors red, green and blue. Nothing special. But you can see the main problem. Here you see the maximum brightness of the LED when it's multiplexed. And right next to it is the same LED powered with a button cell. The difference is huge! And you can't even see the multiplexed LEDs from the other side. That's how dark they are. The reason is actually pretty simple and I was aware of it from the start, but I did not expect such a drastic effect. Well, you are always smarter afterwards. Here is an example. I have 8 LEDs on my breadboard. If I turn one constantly on with 20 milliamps, then this is the normal brightness. And now I multiplex them. With 8 LEDs it means that each one is only 1 8th of the time switched on, which of course decreases the brightness. It's the same as pulse width modulation. And with 10 rows it means that each LED is only 1 10th of the time on. No matter how fast I go through the lines, it's always 1 10th. 
Now I could increase the brightness with big peak currents like 100 milliamps, which most LEDs can handle without a problem. I just had to change the resistor on the TLC. But the relation between forward current and luminous intensity is not linear, which means I need even more current to get a good brightness. But it helped a bit and this random light code looked pretty neat. Also, if you supply much current to your LEDs while multiplexing and your code goes apeshit at some point, you can easily fry all LEDs in a row with constant 100 milliamps. What's the solution you may ask? Well, there are a few like decreasing the size of the matrix or using other LED drivers which can output 200 milliamps and some more. But I thought, no. I wanted to make a relatively easy tutorial so you can recreate it. And this would get too technical and too complicated. I did what every maniac would have done. I ripped out all the wiring and all the LEDs. And no, I did not cry it. But it was a terrible feeling. Anyway, thanks for watching this first failure part. Be sure to watch the next successful part where you actually learn how to build a functional matrix. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. That would be awesome. Stay creative and I will see you next time.